Welcome to Depression to Expression. My name is Scott. If you have come to YouTube for flashy videos, cool cuts and effects, you have come to the wrong place. This is me in front of a camera talking about mental health. Hope you enjoy it. Today, we are going to talk about the causes, causes of anxiety disorder. So please raise your hand, right meow, if you have ever had anxiety. If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. I know you're lying. I know you are. It doesn't matter if you're diagnosed with anxiety. You don't have to be diagnosed with a disorder to experience it. In fact, anxiety is a very healthy feeling. That's what made us run away from tigers like our ancestors were all cool with it because they needed it. Right now, what's happening with mood disorders and anxiety in general is people are experiencing it at the wrong times and very often. And if you go to get diagnosed and you say something's wrong, they're gonna ask you, you know, are you anxious a lot and when are you anxious? The doctor will ask you this. Because if you're getting anxious when you're putting on your socks, you know, that's, that's not really a, an event that should cause anxiety. Although, maybe you had an experience with socks when you were a child, and we're gonna get to that, okay, with the causes. So, in this video, we're gonna talk about some causes of anxiety. Stay tuned. First of all, if you Google causes for anxiety, you will find millions of search results. And if you click on any of these legitimate sources, check out some you know legitimate resources, health websites, you will see under causes that there's really no 100% certain cause for anxiety. Just like depression, just like a bunch of other mood disorders. We are very early in the stages of research for mental illnesses, guys. If you don't believe me, do your research. Trust me, there are so many unknowns. We really don't fully understand how, first of all, how the brain works. It's still a mystery, but especially how, how mood disorders work, how we get them, how to cure them. It is still a very blank space. Doctors and very smart people why did I say it like that? No, I'm not saying all Indians are doctors. You're racist. Um, there are very smart people looking into these things. But for now, check out the websites. It says there is no known cause. So I'm going to put in some of my own thoughts into the causes for anxiety, but the websites do have a few and I, I want to mention those as well. So the first one I like to talk about is childhood abuse. If you look at any mood disorder, the causes that they do have usually say childhood abuse. And I used to think that's all Sigmund Freud shit. What happened in your past doesn't matter. But there is seemingly a correlation between something that happened as a childhood when your brain was developing and you were, you were experiencing all of these new things and correlating this to this. And that travels with you and that sticks with you too. Uh, when you're a teenager and into young adulthood and your whole life. So let me give an example. If you, every time you had pizza as a child, every time you had pizza, okay, you had pizza and then your parents, so you're a young, you're a young child and then your parents always fought. Every time you had pizza as a child, they fought about which pizza place was better? And they had a legitimate fight. Our Ford knows is better. No pizza, pizza is better. And they like would just fight for an hour. And you're eating this pizza and you're getting the smell and the taste and blah, blah, blah. And this is going on in the background. They're fighting. Oh my gosh, maybe it's even getting violent and abusive because they're fighting over which pizza place is best. Over time, let's say 10 years later, Every time you have a slice of pizza, you get a little icky feeling. You get a little anxious feeling and you don't know why. Guys, I'm telling you, there are these correlations that happen all the time. Where something happened in your childhood and now you're getting some weird anxious feeling in the present and you really don't know why, but you go to therapy and somehow you dig into your past and you figure out that this anxious or this anxiety is being caused from something that happened way back when, and you just haven't fully processed it. It's kind of been repressed and not really um, experienced yet. 
It's very interesting. And that's just one example. I know um, the best pizza is um, Coachelli's down the street. So that was just an example there, okay? Second cause. So the first one's childhood abuse. Very unfortunate, very treatable to process these things that happened in your past. The second cause they're trying to um, really figure out is genetics. Genetics. If your dad is very anxious and your mom's very anxious and even your grandparents had anxiety disorders, it's probable, possible, but also maybe more probable that you will have an anxiety disorder. But the thing is, you're more prone to have an anxiety disorder. It doesn't mean you are destined. Some people get that mixed up and they, and they quit before they even start it. My dad had anxiety, so, you know, I'm a pretty anxious person. Uh, nothing I can do about it. Oh, shut up. Come on. Don't give up. Don't pull the genetic card right away, man. If you're overweight, don't pull the thyroid card right away. But it may be a legitimate cause, just like genetics. You may be fighting and fighting and fighting, and there's honestly nothing you can do about it. But don't pull it out as a lazy card. So, genetics is one thing. They're tr still trying to understand this, okay? So we have childhood abuse. We have genetics. What do you think the third one is? You're right. <laughs> it's other illnesses. This could be other medications you're taking to treat, uh, I don't know, heart disease. Some different kind of uh, medications that could even um, treat other mental illnesses that you're dealing with, other mood disorders that cause a bit of anxiety. Something you're taking for depression may actually cause a bit of anxiety, but get rid of your depression. You see what I mean? Every kind of medication you take, there's always side effects. It's just, you know, what's more important, feeling good and how bad's the side effect. You know what I mean? We're playing that balance game. But it could be you were diagnosed, how unfortunate it would be to be diagnosed with cancer, but it could be you're dealing with another illness and your thoughts are racing about all sorts of things and that's causing you anxiety. So it could be another illness. And that brings me to number four and that's life events. So life events could be a diagnosis of, an, of another illness, but it could be you're moving somewhere. You're leaving all your friends. And this could have been when you were a child too. There are all types of serious events that can occur, big life changes that can cause anxiety. So in the moment you're anxious, but it could carry on through the months and years to come. So it's interesting when we talk about what's the cause of anxiety disorders, it's a very different discussion for what causes anxiety. So the life events thing between illnesses and, and let's say moving places, going to university, college, that can be what's causing anxiety because that, can, that doesn't have to be a permanent and chronic thing. It can be for a while, maybe for a week or two, a month, but then you get used to it, you adapt to new situations, etc. When we're talking about anxiety disorders, that's the website that says we don't really know. That's the childhood abuse, maybe. That's the genetics. It's pretty crazy how much we don't know. Crazy, oh my gosh, I said it, stigma. Uh. So here's what I wanna talk about. Those were the causes that you know you read on the web and some books and what people are, are talking about online and such and such. I wanna talk about something I talked about, I don't know, one of the meditation videos or uh, I, I forget which one, but it's about our expectations not fitting our actual life circumstance, our reality. Because think about it. If you're expecting your life to be some way, if you expected to be married at age 26, you expected to have three kids by 20 or by 33, okay? You expected to be a stay-at-home mom and to raise your kids like your parents did and they did a great job and you wanted that life. You expected to have it. That was your expectation. That was your goal. So now you're 36 and you haven't found your partner yet. You have no kids. You have a full-time job you don't like. Wow. 
Your expectations have not fit your reality. Not even close. And that can bring up anxiety because, as I've said before, my life shouldn't be like this. Why did this happen to me? It shouldn't be this way. It could have been different. You see what I mean? This can bring up a lot of depression, anxiety, because our reality is here, but our mind is over here. Our body's in reality, and our mind is somewhere else. This can be a huge cause of anxiety, but not just in the moment. If our expectations continually don't match up to our reality, meaning we're not living with what is, and we're not living in the moment and doing all we can to kind of be present, then that can be an anxiety disorder because the anxiety is going to be chronic, baby. Chronic. So that's what I mean by anxiety versus an anxiety disorder. There's a big, big difference. So when we think about childhood abuse, when we think about um, genetics, again, those can be the disorder part. Life events can be for the in the moment anxiety. And then for what I just said, the expectations in reality, that can definitely, definitely be both. So it's definitely something to think about. Please let me know if you have any causes that could fit in with the anxiety part. What causes you anxiety? But also for the anxiety disorder part. Do you have any thoughts? Have you done any research? Is there anything I'm missing for the causes of anxiety disorder? Please let me know. Depressiontoexpression.com. Please visit my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Please share this video. Take care.